Hi, I'm Dan Oakley, I'm the Dark Skies Officer for the South Downs National Park and in this short video I'll be showing you how you can get the best stargazing experience here on the Downs. So the first things you're probably asking yourself is what is an International Dark Sky Reserve? What is a Dark Sky Discovery Site? And are there any general tips you can give for visiting these sites? Well, for the first one, what is an International Dark Sky Reserve? Well, it should be fairly obvious. It's a reserve that's designated because it has dark skies. And the South Downs National Park was designated as one in 2016. And we called it Moore's Reserve after dedicating it to Sir Patrick Moore. And the real distinction that makes it different from any other landscapes is we have dark skies that you can see certain astronomical objects, things like the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy, and the Orion Nebula. So you, by having those designations, you know for sure that when you visit them, you're going to be in for a good dark sky experience. Now the dark sky discovery sites, they're a bit more of a national scheme. And they look to get, uh, designate places that are small, car parks and things like that, that are really accessible, that you can go to, you can set up with your telescope, and you can observe the night sky. So we have a number of these all across the South Downs National Park, and that's where we really are visiting today. It's all about some general tips when you're visiting dark sky discovery sites. Well, I've got three really. The first one is wrap up warm. Never underestimate the cold. Um, you really want to double up, double layers, double socks, double gloves, and a nice warm hat, take some tea and coffee and things like that, because you'll be surprised how quickly you can get cold just by standing around in an open Heathland or Downland site. The second thing I say is don't use your phone when you're stargazing. The white light will really mess up your dark sky eye adaption and that's what you really want you need to give your eyes 20 minutes to adjust to the darkness you really need to avoid any white light what i would suggest is you do your homework before you go out you can print off star charts or you can look on your phone before you go out which is always useful but if you can buy a head torch with a red light function that's really useful because you can take that out and you can use that when you're out and about because it doesn't disrupt your dark sky uh, uh, eye adaption so you can use both so that's my little tip red head torch and the last thing is if you are going to take any kit out, make sure it all works beforehand. Make sure you've cleaned your binoculars, make sure you know how to use your camera, take the tripod, and don't do what I did after I went for a two hour hike to set my camera up and telescope up is realise you forgot the memory card for your camera. Don't be a dark sky doofus. Three easy tips. So I hope you've enjoyed a little guide to stargazing at our dark sky discovery sites. You'll probably see them, they're all a little bit different, all offer a different kind of experience and a different view but try and get to see as many as you can because you will have a different experience but you probably want to know what you can do about helping us keep the, the downs dark basically just have a look at your own lighting you kind of advocate that lighting should be appropriate when it's installed that it's not too over bright and all the light is pointing down that's really simple really because we don't like the light that goes into the air because that's what causes sky pollution uh, and it also irritates your neighbors as well if you've got particularly bright light so make sure that your lights all point downwards you can also make sure that they're a nice warm temperature, 3000 kelvins and lower. And this is good, good, good because the bright blue lights actually are quite damaging to wildlife and they scatter a lot more further in the air. So they create a much bigger effect than you know, the kind of orange lights. So make sure you go for that, it's quite important, 3000 kelvin. And the other thing to consider is how bright the light is itself. Now for most domestic purposes, for putting keys in the door, cooking a sausage on a barbecue uh, in the summer, you only need about a thousand lumens 500 is best really for things like that no more than one and a half thousand for any domestic purposes so avoid those really cheap horrible off the shelf uh, kind of security lighting because that's not what you need for domestic purposes it's way too bright it'll just annoy the neighbors uh, and it will just destroy any kind of light pollution uh, in the area so there you have it really you can go out and have a look you can try everything you want to try you can get cold, you can take some nice pictures, but most of all, embrace the darkness.